Hey, it's Jared, Malibu Caravan. We're about to perform an operation on this thing, literally. So we come into the van, it's got the club lounge at the back with the battery system top and then bedding at the rear. At the moment, the batteries are under here in chassis mounted boxes. There is an inverter that they have had fitted in the front uh, and they've had the sat king installed so it's got an extra whole heap of hdmi and coaxial stuff going on a little um tracker just a couple other bits and pieces a really good factory dc charger install that is just loose now with the red arc inverter in the front it's a 3000 watt inverter it only got installed a couple months ago but i want you to check this out because this is this is why we use what we use and why we do the systems that we do because it negates any of the potential issues that you have with a setup like this. So, red arc inverter, wired up. In the tunnel boot, you've got a remote for it, which is that cable there that's been filled in with a junction box cover, which is odd, but whatever. 240 coming out of this, okay, so fair enough. That inverter has no AC transfer switch built in. So you can only turn that inverter on to power certain things. All that inverter does is power this power point. So what these customers had to do was have a 15 meter lead, turn on the inverter, plug a lead into here, and then plug a lead into their shore power input here. But guess what? When they do that, that also runs the AC charger up the top, which is run, trying to charge the batteries, which are running the inverter. So and that's what I call an endless circle of death because you've got the batteries running an inverter, the inverter running the AC charger and the AC charger trying to charge the batteries. You'll have conversion losses and you'll be losing power and gaining power. So that is exhibit A. Exhibit two is why would you want to run a 15 meter lead from the front of the van here to the back of the van, just to give the van inside shore power. You just want to be able to plug into there and it'll do it all for you. And with the Victron unit that we're going to install, it's going to do everything. It's going to do all the AC transfer switching. It's going to do all the charging all in one unit. Now, battery tray. So these two are standard. This one was added on. Just two tech screws. Tech screw on that side, tech screw on that side to hold in this battery tray. Not to mention the awful packing out of the battery but anyway probably going to get a welder in to cut them off and regal and make it look nice because the customer wants those boxes gone and we're going to be relocating the batteries the inverter the dc charger solar the whole system into this tunnel boot at the rear of the van because the customer wants to try and take some of his ball weight off at the front so Yes, this is excess from the habitable area, so the batteries are going to have to go in boxes, which is fine. We're still going to leave a little bit of this much space here so that he can stack some storage in on this side and then a little bit of storage on the other side, but it'll have batteries, multi-plus inverter, all the Victron gear in here, and then we're going to retrofit a screen up on the inside. The roof currently has three solar panels on there. I'm not sure what the wattage is. I would say 120 watts, maybe. We're gonna remove the antenna as well. Yet to work out what they're gonna get on there. I will do that in the next hour, but we're gonna try and get around that 1400 watts up there. So 1.4 kilowatts, running that off two or three circuits and have some on the front as well. And then as well have a blanket plug-in. So I just wanted to show you that inverter setup because it's silly, but we see it so often. But for the price of that red arc unit, you can get a Victron one from us for cheaper, I think. And it's got the 120 amp charge built in and it's got the AC transfer switch. And it's got five years warranty. Gonna get cracking on this now. We're gonna start ripping it apart. I just wanted to show you before we start ripping it apart and uh, working out what circuits do what. And yeah, we'll keep updated. We now finished this Malibu caravan. We've done things a little bit differently in this one with the battery system all up in this back club lounge. One, we did that because the customer wanted some more weight over the rear of the van to get their ball weight up. So they were happy to do this. And two, the three chassis mounted boxes, one of them was tech screwed on and I wasn't happy with the weight 
of it holding the weight of the new batteries plus there would have been a lot of wires going to and from say like under the bed to the batteries with the inverter and whatnot so that's why we've just moved everything to the rear we'll show you how we've done it so massive solar on the roof we have seven 225 watt panels which i'll show you i'll jump up on the roof in a sec we're not getting much at the moment because it's in the shade but everything is in series so on this solar 70 we can be getting up to 100 volts and then on the two ones at the front we'll be getting up to around 40 volts uh, and then there's a third one which is for the blanket plug-in we have three 300 amp hour lithiums so 900 amp hours of power in a sealed battery box we've got our vent down the side here per spec slid as per the customer's request 70 amp solar for the 5 225 watts on the roof 50 amp dc now with the dc charger we've actually run 25 mil cable on the van and then 16 mil from here to there to account for your voltage drop issues so that's something that we don't usually do that was a bit of an upgrade for this one uh our ground array solar the two front panels because they're in a bit of a slant so we've separated them our solar circuit breakers and then our servo and then this was the thing i spoke about in the last video so the ssc and that is converting our uh, rv electronics tank sensors to be compatible uh to an ohm reading so that they're compatible with the victron turbo system so that's their tanks there they've only got two sensors they have three fresh tanks and a gray tank with no uh, sensor on it but the two front tanks only have one sensor that's just how the van came from factory unfortunately but all the sensors are working perfectly obviously three kva multiplus you've got all your other bits and pieces of all your fusing in your fuse block here manual reset circuit breaker for the inverter and then this midi fuse here is protecting the inside of the dc circuit so the car has its own fuse caravan input side has its own fuse and then caravan output side also has its own fuse ac output fuse is here ac input fuse is still factory up the top and then we've got the power for this is running not off this so even if we hit the master switch here screen still stays powered so you can see what you're at battery voltage wise the bm pro battery plus hub now is basically just like a a big fuse panel it's doing no charging at all so no dc charging no solar no ac charging uh your multi plus here is doing your ac charging and you're inverting so running all your power points at 240 volts off your battery system you've got obviously your one one two three solar controllers and then four doing your dc charge and then yeah we've run 70 mil across all batteries taking the active off this battery taking the negative off the last battery to make sure that they all stay balanced all of them were charged to full and then balanced and then put in here and then lid on and sealed um, but perspex lid's a good little touch so you can actually see what's going on in there it's a very good bit of kit and with the amount of solar that they have on the roof that i'm about to show you uh they're not going to have any power problems all right so the solar on the roof we have seven 225 watt panels on the roof so our, our top array on the top we've got five panels that are going into that 70 amp charger and then the two panels at the front that are on the slant they are going into one of the 30 amp chargers so everything's running series so one two three four five panels here they'll be running at roughly 100 volts and then the two at the front will be running at roughly 40 volts which is like awesome very good setup this but it also made our life easy because we just completely took up what was already on the roof and started from scratch essentially now so you, let's say total we've got 225 times seven so they've got 1575 watts total just on this center roof going through the 70 amp charger you've got like 1.1 kilowatts of solar which is awesome so they can expect to see 70 amps of charge through the 70 amp charger and then probably close to roughly like just over 20 amps through the charger that's looking after the front two so they can be driving down the road getting anywhere from like 70 to 90 amps of solar through the solar system 
and then they'll also be getting a bit of charge now because the dc charges at the back of the van they're not gonna i don't expect them to get the full 50 but they might be getting 35 40 maybe 30 so they're gonna be they should be getting well and truly within 100 amps of dc charge whilst they're driving down the road from the solar and the dc charge we didn't want to do two dc charges one because of the length and two because he's already got another battery system in his car and it's a 2006 model car so the alternator on that's only like 140 amps i think he's got a red upgrade vision in the car already so we didn't want to overload the alternator so that's why we just did the one dc charger but we did more solar so that they can be off grid for as long as possible and the solar should be absolutely cranking in but yeah hope you like the video if you've got any questions let me know and i'll do my best to answer them we'll see you in the next video which is going to be uh, something similar to this